Father Luke, the Franciscans of the Renewal, you are known for working with some of the poorest of the poor, the destitute, the homeless, the drug addicts, women in crisis pregnancies, just a whole gamut of poverty. How does that work with impoverished groups for you, your, your fellow brothers, um, whether you're a priest or a volunteer with groups like that? You know, whether you're the person handing out canned corn with St. Vincent de Paul or the priest like yourself in the streets with people, how does that help a person truly grow in holiness? Yeah, thank you. I have to try to slim down what I want to say. I've got about 20, 20 bullet points to answer that one. <laughs> But um, I think really it comes back to the gospel and it comes back to the, the, the reality that our faith, um, what it means to be a follower of Jesus, a disciple, a devout Catholic, it isn't just a matter of uh, doing devotions or prayers or wearing scapulars or getting to mass on Sunday, you know, but it's like an integration to your whole life, which includes some sort of work with the poor. I mean, Jesus himself has been highlighted quite a bit by a number of popes, including recently Pope Francis, that uh, somehow serving Jesus and the poor isn't just for a couple of people. It's actually essential to the gospel. And that comes in so many different ways. You think of the spiritual works of mercy, the corporal works of mercy. And um, I'll tell you, over these years of living and working and serving the poor, our community uh, had uh, been, our founders had been good friends with Mother Teresa of Calcutta, St. Mother Teresa. And had been inspired by her and encouraged by her to, to start this renewal, which would have a more intentional focus on living and working with the poor. And as the years have gone on, there's been a really subtle yet profound shift in my own experience in prayer life. I think in the beginning, there's the idea of, of um, being in the category of the haves, and we're here to help and bless those who are the have-nots. And, uh, and sometimes with people who are drug addicted or mentally ill or in the streets, that dynamic uh, it feels very clear and apparent. They're very needy and wounded and, and, and need a lot of aid. But what ends up happening is you start to realize that you always receive more than you give. Mm -hmm. And that particularly the relationships and the friendships that, you know, maybe they're getting a sandwich, but there's a beautiful, profound grace that comes to you through them. And so there's kind of this beautiful give and take, this giving and receiving that happens with the Lord's grace where you're serving Jesus, you're you're trying to find his, what Mother Teresa would call, he's wearing a distressing disguise, <laughs> the poor, and you're looking for his presence so that you can express your love to him by loving his, you know, least of his brothers, but then also to allow the Lord to minister to you and speak to you through the encounter with the person who is poor. Mm. And being in a place where you realize, as it says in the catechism, we are all beggars before God. Mm. Father, what was it like just to go on, continue with that for a moment? You are from a small town. I think, did you say Indiana from the Midwest? What was it like just the first couple of times that you were out in New York or New, New Jersey on dirty streets with people who are really seemed quite lost? Were you, were you scared at all when you began that kind of ministry? Yes, it was intimidating. It was like, um, for me, a metaphor would be getting out of the boat to walk on the water. Sure. Well, this is uncomfortable, you know, like, um, but it's one of these things where um, so often the Lord will invite us to get out of our comfort zone to help us to grow, help us to stretch. Um, one of our priests says it really well. It's time to get out of your comfort zone and into the zone of the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. 